Want to get your copyrights back? Here's what you need to know. I'm Erin Jacobson, known as the Music Industry Lawyer, and today I'm going to talk to you about copyright terminations. So there are certain provisions in the copyright law where under certain circumstances an author or that author's heirs can reclaim copyrights that have been granted away at some time in the past. It's a really complicated section of the law and not all attorneys are well versed in it, but today I'm going to go over the basics. There are two main sections of the copyright law that apply to copyright terminations. The first is section 304C. Section 304C applies to copyrights and grants before January 1st, 1978. Termination under this section can be effected between 56 and 61 years after the original date of copyright. And termination may be effected in regards to one author's share of the work. And if the author's share is being terminated by the author's heirs, those heirs must make up a majority, at least 50%, of that author's termination interest. The next relevant section in copyright law is Section 203. Section 203 applies to grants made after January 1st, 1978, regardless of the original copyright date of the work. Grants falling under this section may be terminated starting 35 years after the grant date up to 40 years after the grant date. Or if the grant includes the right of publication for the work, then that five year period begins either on 35 years after the date of publication or 40 years after the date of the grant, whichever is earlier. Now under section 203, when a grant was signed by more than one author, it actually requires a majority of those authors or their heirs to terminate the grant. But there are exceptions to this rule if separate grants were signed, such was the pointed issue in the Victor Willis YMCA case. So who can terminate? The author, or if the author is no longer living, then the author's heirs. And the author's heirs go through an analysis of whether there's a widow alive, whether there are children alive, things of that nature. It gets complicated and you want to have someone very experienced with this analyzing who needs to terminate and how. So here are some points that apply to both sections. Now when you want to effect a termination, you actually have to send a notice to the current owner of the copyright in advance of the termination date. Now this notice must be served not more than 10, but not less than two years before the effective date of termination. If you miss this notice window, you lose your right to terminate. And notice must be recorded with the Copyright Office to be valid. Another very important point is that works for hire or grants by will are not eligible for termination. And termination is a matter of law, so it can be affected regardless of any contract or agreement to the contrary. So why is this important? It can revive older compositions or catalogs and help them to start making money again when they're currently lost and forgotten in the catalogs of large music publishers. Also, it could mean more money for the authors or heirs. And the decision whether to terminate must be carefully considered based on the catalog at issue as well as the situation of the authors and heirs. If you are an author or an heir with catalog or compositions that are potentially eligible for termination, it's imperative that you have a conversation with someone very experienced with copyright terminations because it's a very complicated area and there are many factors at play. I regularly work with legacy clients and their heirs to determine the best plan for the catalog and filing termination notices if that is the best choice for the client. You can contact me at my website at themusicindustrylawyer.com if this is something with which I may be able to help you. I'm Erin Jacobson, known as the Music Industry Lawyer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with another music industry topic.